So hello and welcome. I'm Frederick Dunn and today I want you to take a walk with me. It's September the 18th and you should be checking your landing boards on your beehives. I'm going to show you why. This time of year we have yellow jacket problems but you also need to get up as early as you possibly can right at sunrise. That would be helpful and see what's going on on the landing boards because there's a lot we can learn here. Look at that. There's a drone being tossed out. For those of you who don't know, drones are male bees and the workers don't need them going into the end of the season. Here's another hive landing board and there's a male honeybee also tossed out. Now they are fanning their wings and they're evaporating the honey, the nectar that they've gathered and on this landing board we have a problem. One of the first things I want you to notice though is look how wide open the entrance is. So this time of year entrance reducers are very important more so than many other times of the year and that's because these cooler mornings some of the hives have uh, a disadvantage because yellow jacket wasps fly colder it's only about 50 degrees right now and the bees have not gotten out and started foraging but guess who is foraging these yellow jacket wasps so what I'm going to do is I'm going to restrict this entrance even more, but I also want them to be able to still vent. So we're going to put up a screen, a stainless steel one. You can see the screen left here. There is one in place that helped a little, but not enough. So this hive has a deep super, 10 frame, and a medium 10 frame. So that's it, two boxes, and there's plenty of bees in here. The thing is, they're not out and about yet, and their entrance is too wide. So look, I did this really fancy attachment of a stainless steel screen to reduce the entrance even more. And I used hot glue, that's why it looks messy. But the good news about hot glue is, later you can peel it off when you don't need it and you haven't damaged your wood. The problem is the yellow jackets. Look how many of them there are. This demonstrates to me that they've been getting in pretty easily already. Now, you know when they're pinging on a hive and they're trying to target it, you'll see yellow jackets going after the sides, any upper venting that you have. If you've got an upper entrance, they're trying to exploit that. They, of course, go to the main entrance, and that's at the bottom of your hive, and that's what this is. And the bees are trying to defend, so it's not like the number of bees inside the hive is inadequate to protect it. It's that uh, these opportunistic yellow jacket wasps have been able to sneak in through the edges. And once a few get in and get to some of that nectar that's still open inside the hive, or maybe they'll even take some of your larvae if they can get to it. Uh, but this time of year, they all want nectar. Everything needs nectar, including other bees. So reducing the entrance of your hive is very important. You want to know what's going on and you want even medium sized colonies to be able to defend themselves because yellow jacket wasps are bad enough. It's frustrating to watch them get right in and uh, come back out with resources that they've stolen. Once they do that, that's why you get multiple wasps coming in. So the game is to reduce the entrance enough that even these early foragers don't make it in because they only need a couple to succeed get some nectar fly out fly back to their nest and uh, share with the others that they found this resource now you may not know wasps like this can't eat meat that's right and that, that may surprise you because we often see them taking parts of bees away picking up bits and pieces from bees that are dead on landing boards like the drone we saw earlier but uh, the adult wasps actually collect the meat and they chew it up a little bit and they take it back to their paper wasp nest. So what they're feeding back there would be their developing larvae. Now the larvae can eat the meat. The reward is the nectar that the larvae excrete and then these foraging wasps get that benefit and it encourages them to go and collect more and bring it back. But here we are at the end of the year so a couple of problems exist one is that the wasp nests are huge now so they've been building up all summer long again i said this is september the 18th this is a cycle that happens every single year which is why i go out early in the morning to see which colonies look like they might be in jeopardy and as their 
developing larvae start to dwindle because they make queens at the end of the year and wasps don't reuse their nests every year. So what they're doing is they'll be producing queens at the end of the year. They produce males also. The males mate with the queens, the males die, the queens fly off at the end of the season, and they overwinter solitary. So they'll get into decomposing leaves, things like that, wherever they can find shelter. And then in the spring, each of those queens will establish a brand new paper wasp nest all by herself. So that's what's going on here. And now when they don't have the larvae feeding them the nectar resources as a reward for bringing in the protein packets that they do from other animals, um, they end up all going after nectar all the time. So slow motion, of course. And this just shows you it's pretty darn frustrating to watch these wasps get in right through the entrance. This is actually happening pretty darn fast, but it's been slowed way down so you can see what the behavior is. And even with the entrance reduced, they're getting in. Now this is gonna be short lived though, because the population of this hive is strong. They do have brood, they have a queen. So there really shouldn't be a target other than the fact that I left their entrance too wide for the time of year. So instead of blocking it up with wood, by the way, I chose to use screen and that's so that they can still vent the hive because they are still drying out their honey. They have to get the water content down, but uh, we don't want predators like these wasps to be able to exploit that wide entrance. Now it's gonna get worse. That's why I feel like it's timely and I needed to put this video out right away. You don't have to sit and watch the entire 30 sec 36 minute video. Uh, to know that we have to reduce the entrance, that you're getting your bees prepared to defend themselves, not just against wasps and other predators like that, but what's about to happen when the nectar flow ends, which will be coming up in a couple of weeks here, worse than the wasps will be bees from other colonies. And usually it's the largest and the strongest colonies that we'll be sending out their scouts. And when forage is light, that's when they'll start flying up and sniffing the entrance of different hives. And you can tell them they're easy to spot. Scouts that are looking to rob will be coming in under the hive, to the sides, up near the top, in the back. They don't generally fly straight up and try to get through the entrance. And that's because just as pictured here, there are guard bees ready to intercept them. And the goal, of course, just like with the wasps, take out the foraging scouts first and then you won't have to deal with the hundreds or even thousands that follow when it comes to honeybees. If honeybee scouts find an entrance, easy way to get into a beehive that's got a bunch of honey stored and some open nectar still, if they get in there and get a taste of that, they will fly back to their colony, share those resources with other bees in the colony that are ready to go, and late in the year there are thousands of bees in each colony that are unemployed. So they return in huge numbers. So actually the honeybees are far more treacherous when it comes to taking over a weaker colony, stealing and robbing all of their resources, and then the colony is doomed going into winter. So the good news is I check my landing boards every morning. And this is the first morning that this particular hive was being invaded by these little wasps. And so it's good news, we interrupted them. I put that uh, stainless steel screen in there, closed up the entrance a little bit. And remember, it's only in the 50s. So if you watch up to about the 20 minute mark, you'll see the difference in behavior when it warms up into the 60s. And then you'll see that the bees are much more capable of defending themselves when the weather's warm. Now coming around the edge of the screen right there is a drone. He doesn't look too energetic. So for those of you who are not familiar with the way uh, they distribute jobs within the beehive, the drone there with the large eyes is a male bee. A lot of people mistakenly think that that male bee will defend the hive, but they don't. In fact, he's looking kind of sluggish and that's probably because the resident bees in this colony have stopped feeding him. So he's actually being ejected from the hive. In the observation hives that we have, we see that they're actually chasing the drones around. If they don't get the message, even the female workers will sting and kill 
the drone. So they're being cast out. Uh, so they're they're packing down for winter themselves. They're getting rid of their excesses. But they're also becoming desperate for resources, and that's why the larger colonies will rob out the smaller colonies. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this too, we have yellow jacket wasps here. So when you look at a hive, unless you spend time and watch entrances at length to make sure they're not in any kind of jeopardy or under attack, when it's wasps attacking, you don't see a bunch of detritus on the landing board. You don't see debris everywhere. When they're being attacked by other honeybees, that's when you see a bunch of little brown and tan spots all over the landing board. You see little bits and pieces of wax because when they're attacked by other honeybees, they chew apart the caps of the wax, they chew apart the wax comb, and they leave that debris, bits and pieces, all over the landing board around the entrance, and the entrance becomes very dirty. So here, this entrance is still pretty clean. So we're only dealing with wasps, that's the good news. And they'll be able to cope with these wasps, as you'll see, as I mentioned again, if you don't want to watch the whole thing, jump ahead to about the 20 minute mark, you'll see the difference. They are still being attacked, but that's because uh, some of these wasps initially got in, which is what we're seeing now. Now the sound that you're listening to, I know that sounds like dinosaurs. Those are just roosters crowing. But because this video sequence is slowed down so much, the modulated sound makes them sound like dinosaurs. So all of these noises that you're hearing are the actual recording from this video. Nothing's been added. And the bees that you see at the entrance here are guard bees. And you'll see them turn, open their mandibles. I was interested to see that not only do they try to defend from the landing board, but they'll even fly into the air and try to intercept some of these wasps on the wing, which is interesting, but very difficult to video. And guard bees are senior bees in the hive. So that's one of the last jobs they have before they actually go out and become foragers themselves. So guard bees should be tough, capable of stinging. Those are the ones that fly off and sting you. I am sitting right next to this hive. I'm not wearing any protection, so I don't have a veil or anything. Here comes a yellow jacket out, of course. So yellow jackets, bees, they don't seem to care about me at all, but uh, they do need to deal with one another. Yellow jackets are desperate for nectar and any sugar source right now, which is why you'll also see them if you've got apple trees and there's apples on the ground and things like that. Maybe you've got grapes. You'll find wasps on those as well because you're going to get sucrose from that. And then uh, the honeybees are just left defending themselves. But because honey has such a high sugar content, the reward is really good for these wasps. So they can't resist even risking their lives to go in there. Now, can a honeybee kill a wasp? They sure can. And in past years, I videoed them stinging wasps to death to the point where the wasps couldn't move anymore, but they were still alive on the landing board, just envenomated by the worker bees in that hive. The other question that people often have is, if a honeybee stings a wasp or even another bee, do they lose their stinger and die the way they do when they sting a mammal? And the answer to that is mostly not. Uh, so they can sting each other and they can sting wasps several times over and the barbs in their stingers don't get caught up in that insect and so they're not dying after having that engagement. Now when it comes to the yellow jacket wasps, they do not have barb stingers. That's why they can sting us and anything else they decide to sting as many times as they want. They don't lose their stingers and they don't die after delivering a sting. So these wasps, and here's one crawling along the inside of that stainless steel screen, coming out scot-free, about to get away. Uh, they can sting and uh, not die, of course. They sting us over and over. And uh, they actually don't use their stingers that much, though. They can chew with their mandibles. They can cut meat. So they're very distinctive. You'll also notice that the honeybee on the right, the wasp on the left, the honeybee is furry, covered in hair. And yellow jacket wasps are very smooth and virtually hairless, it, just based on what you can see with your eyes. Now you put them under a microscope, they do have hairs on their bodies, but uh, they're basically hairless. 
And so when you look at that, it's distinctive. And also, these are not all one species of wasps. There were a couple others that came in. And you may be wondering, why am I letting this happen? Why aren't I killing those wasps myself? I mean, I've done it in the past. I've tested the electric fly swatters before. I've used a bugzooka, which sucks them up into a capsule. I've used, uh, of course, wasp traps and things like that. The goal was to knock out the foragers, but you know what? It's a losing game this time of year. You can set out wasp traps if you want to, but if you're in rural America, there are wasp nests everywhere. So the very idea that you can put a dent in the number of wasps is, uh, you know, kind of not doable. Now, if you have a wasp nest that's right next to your bee yard, sure, take them out. I would. And uh, there are different species. The regular paper wasps, which are not yellow jackets, I keep them around because they tend to push out some of the yellow jackets. So that's a benefit. So again, that's a rooster. If you've ever watched Jurassic Park, you can start to get an idea that maybe they recorded roosters crowing, just modulated that sound down, and now we have dinosaur sounds very interesting so anyway back to the video the yellow jackets are still trying to get in and uh, one of the things I like about this is we can take our time and watch and see what the bees do how they cope how wasps are getting in and rather than going around and try to kill all their nests which as I pointed out is really not possible the other thing is they do a lot of beneficial things which is why I get a lot of pushback when I kill wasps but um, Equipping your hives, setting up the bees so they can defend themselves. There's another entrance that does a very good job of helping your bees defend themselves from wasps. And those are called hive gates. H-I-V-E-G-A-T-E. -E. And so people in the northwestern United States, for example, often lose a lot of their colonies of bees due to wasps at the end of the year. So hive gate entrances are very beneficial for places like that. Here's one of the yellow jackets on my nitrile glove. Now these gloves don't protect you from stinging, but it just gives us a close look at the wasp and you can see the details, see their anatomy. You'll get to see the mandibles here that cut flesh when it turns in the direction of the camera here in a second. But uh, they're very machine-like and very efficient at what they do. And of course they make a paper nest. And this time of year, when the leaves start to fall, or when the foliage gets cut back, you may uncover very large nests of yellow jackets. They can also be in the ground. They excavate really well. You'll see them dragging bits of dirt out. But at the end of the year, when the leaves fall off, you often find a basketball-sized nest, and they will let you know that they're there. So that's when most people deal with them. Now here we are, full speed. And you can see how frustrating it is. Look at all the wasps that already got in, that are coming out, even with the guard bees trying to stop them. But the temperatures are rising slightly, so their ability to defend themselves uh, increases with the temperature. So the fix is we've reduced the entrance by adding more screen, and uh, that's pretty much all we need to do. This colony will take care of itself, and if you keep watching, You'll see what happens when the weather warms back up, more bees on the landing board, because at night when it falls below 60, often the bees will cluster, and when they do that, there are no guards at the entrance. So that's where the wasps have a big advantage, and they fly in when it's cold, they get into the hive, and then the bees are still cold and they can't deal with them. But the cluster, hopefully, is down low in the hive also. And that's one of the advantages of that hive gate entrance. The cluster is formed directly over the hive gate. When the wasps come in and enter the hive trying to rob it, they end up coming in right underneath the cluster. And there are bees in the mantle of that cluster that will attack the wasps. So it's a layered defense system with a long entrance. So I'm just going to leave you to watch the rest of it if you want to. The word I wanted to get out this morning is please make sure inspect your landing boards at sunrise. And then, of course, reduce entrances on any colony that looks like it can't defend itself. 
So that was the temperature before, 54. We're bumped up to 61. So the sequences you see after this point are all in warmer temperatures. So thanks for watching. I leave you to watch the rest of the video if you want to for entertainment purposes. I do show other hives to show you what normal landing boards look like. And I want to thank you for watching and please protect your bees with smaller entrances this time of year and you won't have to be hunting down the wasps. And just an FYI, I did find the wasp base of operations and I'm making another video separate from this one showing you what that looks like. Thanks for watching.